The decision to sell them six years ago almost caused a mutiny in the Navy. The aircraft carrier Melbourne was scrapped and our Skyhawk fighter planes were history as well. They were bought by the New Zealand Air Force, which was delighted with the bargain. At the time, even admirals went public, outraged that these aircraft were being ditched. But the Skyhawk saga doesn't end there. Now, we're about to pay the Kiwis millions of dollars to bring those same jets back to Australia, and they'll have to fly them for us. They were once the pride of the Australian Navy. Until Canberra decided Navy fighters had no future. The fleet air arm at Nowra was stripped of its frontline fighter force. Well, I didn't ag agree with the decision. Um, I fought very hard against it. Chief of Naval Staff at the time, yes. Admiral David Leach. My uh, advocacy didn't prevail, and in those circumstances, you've got to say, I, I, sir, and get on with the government decision or resign. Ray Martin reported back in 1983, 400 men were told their services were no longer required here at Nowra. These are the A4 Skyhawks. They've done us just fine for the past 15 years. In a few days' time, they'll be dumped. And to be the, uh, the presiding officer over disbanding it, which is the job I've got now, it really does hurt. In your opinion, is it a stupid decision? Well, I'll put it this way, uh, I can't see the, the logic in it. Commodore Thomas Dadswell commands the Albatross Naval Air Station. If a head has to roll by speaking out now, the Commodore says, it might as well be an old one. Loyalty to me is, uh, is affected by gravity. It goes up, but it also goes down. It was six years ago that Australia sold these Skyhawks to New Zealand for almost a song. Eight jets, two training planes, and a warehouse with enough spare parts and weapons to keep them in the air for 20 years. All that for just $28 million. Now, Australia needs them back. And guess who pays the millions for that? You and I. The old Aussie Skyhawks, do they perform well? Oh, in terms of the ones we, we inherited from Australia, yes. Yeah, or should I say bought, but uh, um, yeah, they perform. In fact, this one is one of the ex uh, Royal Australian Navy aircraft. Wing Commander Frank Sharp. He's commanding officer of the Kiwi Skyhawks, bought from us and now coming back. A little bit of Skyhawk presence back in Australia uh, in a, about a year. 80 months time. Because, as it turns out, we need the Skyhawks to provide vital airborne training to the Navy. Over in New Zealand, you get the distinct impression their pilots can't believe their luck. Well, just from what I heard in Scuttlebutt, it was a pretty good deal. Should we have kept them? Oh, well, you have to ask Mr Beasley, then. I can't go through all the details at the time because I wasn't the minister at the time. You, but, you, were, acting, uh, you were acting. Though. But uh, You were acting Defence Minister at the time. Was I at the, at the time? Well, that's fine. But irrespective of... Whether he remembers or not, Kim Beasley certainly knew about the Skyhawk row when they were sold. And as Defence Minister now, he's negotiating with the Kiwis to bring them back on lease with New Zealand pilots. You don't think you made a mistake? No. My point is that, that we sold the Skyhawks in a package of $28 million dollars to New Zealand. Right. The New Zealanders say the package was worth more like 70 million, so they got a damn good deal. And now, how much are we going to have to pay to train with our old planes back here? Well, it will cost us about, on the figures just given me, around about six million, a bit above six million, to, to do the things that we need to do it now to put them in. And the savings down the line, after that's paid off, will get up to the realm of five million a year. For a while I wanted to go back in the Navy and if they said they were going to have the Skyhawks back I would have been back in a flash. But I wouldn't go back there in a fit now and I certainly wouldn't have my son join the Navy. Former Lieutenant Commander John Hamilton. No longer in uniform and no longer silent. He was the last commanding officer of the Nowra Skyhawks. And now they're coming back here to do exactly the same job. Yes, well when I first heard that I, I felt nauseous. 
I felt really sick because I just couldn't believe that could be allowed to happen. Last month, these Aussie F-18s flew to Ohakia Air Base in New Zealand. Their task? To take on the Kiwi Skyhawks in the skies above the land of the long white cloud. minutes cameras went with them. What you're seeing is an Australian F-18 Hornet slap bang in the missile sight of a Kiwi Skyhawk. A dogfight. If this was war, a Sidewinder missile from the upgraded Skyhawk could blow a 40 million dollar Hornet into oblivion. Fired from a fighter we didn't want. I think the RAF pilots would have to agree that at times they've got such sophisticated equipment in the cockpit, they get their head down looking at what they call the green goddess, the radar they're going, that uh, they forget occasionally, if they're still new at the game, to look out and just tally ho, no different from World War One, and there, here comes uh, a, skyhawk. a green skyhawk uh, ready to chew their butt. I think it was a difficult decision for the people to make at the time. Uh, F-18 squadron leader, John Kindler. What's your personal view about us losing fleet air support? Because the Navy was furious. I'm, 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 I know the Navy was furious. My, my personal view doesn't matter, I don't think. You prefer not to say? I prefer not to say. The Air Force's true feelings were spelt out in a memo to Mr Beasley's department. So, let me show you this document. This is from the Air Force headquarters to the Department of Defence. It says, it seems we have been given a task which is beyond the capability of present resources. Well... What do you say to that? Exactly. Look, I mean, I think you're... you are absurd. The F-18 is too costly an aircraft to fly fleet support to the extent that is required by Navy. The resources aren't there to do it. So why do we get rid of the Skyhawks? So what we do is we use... Sell the Skyhawks for stock we, we sell the, we and then sell, pay more money the, to bring them back six the years later. Yeah, well, and save money. But at a price. The Skyhawks were also our only mid-air refuelling tankers. The only practice the F-18s now get for this delicate and dangerous hookup is with our old Skyhawks in New Zealand. The New Zealanders got a pretty good deal from us, didn't they? At the time, I think they got a reasonable deal, but so did we. The fact of the matter is, there isn't a requirement for the Skyhawk in our order of battle. But there's more. Privately run Learjets have taken over another vital role from the Skyhawks. Naval fleet support. They tow the targets for the Navy's guns and anti-missile systems. What sort of money were we and are we paying for the commercial Learjets to tow the targets for our fleet? Well, you, know what, you know what we're paying them? I think it, uh, it'd be in the realm of a few million dollars. It's two thousand dollars an hour. Well, for five or six well, Learjets uh, that yeah, the Skyhawks uh, used to. Well, two thousand dollars an hour. The and job. It costs uh, ten thousand dollars an hour to fly an F-18. Hence, we pick up Learjets. What's it cost to fly a Skyhawk? Well, uh, the Skyhawks would be in the realm of about that. HMAS Albatross is about to have its wings clipped. When we last visited Nowra, these Grumman trackers had also been given notice. Despite Australia's largely unwatched shores, these submarine seekers with state-of-the-art radar were to be mothballed and sold. Six years later, and those same graceful seabirds have been reduced to this. Clipped of their wings, stripped of their engines, and sitting outdoors here at Nowra's HMAS Albatross. 18 sophisticated Grumman trackers, still worth $50 million, perfect for coastal surveillance, and yet left here to rot. sad state. We argue that they should be kept for coastal surveillance. 
the trackers at least had uh, uh, radar and they could fly on a 24-hour basis uh, uh, day and night. I think uh, it's not much of a deterrence if people know that your only overflights uh, in the north are going to be in daylight hours. They pick their times. Put it this way, if we can actually sell aircraft, we will. It didn't occur to you to perhaps use them, them for coastal uh, surveillance? Yes, it did. I looked at that very carefully. But when you looked at the expense of the Grumman Tracker, up against what a civil aircraft cost you for coastal surveillance, off the top of my head, they were coming out at about two or three times as expensive as the Sky West operation, which is now run, for doing really essentially the same sort of task. With the same radar? Capabilities? Well, they don't necessarily all have the same capabilities, but they perform adequately and at two or three times the cost. The government's argument is simple. Our Grumman trackers can't compete with private enterprise. And as for the Skyhawks, it's cheaper to lease them from the New Zealanders than fly them ourselves. Wouldn't it be nice if a politician could just admit once that he might have made a mistake? Well, there wasn't any error. Excuse uh, me? There is no error. I think we've done pretty well. <laughs>